In this problem, we're going to be asked to find the infusion and the completion time. We're told that an order is for 800 milliliters of D10W, and that needs to infuse at 50 milliliters every hour. We need to start our infusion at 0830. What are the infusion and completion times? Let's first determine and differentiate between the infusion and the completion time. The infusion time is going to be the elapsed time. So how long is it going to take from start to finish, from the bag to start to finish? Now that I probably said that a little strange. But this is the elapsed time. So in the previous examples that we saw with the milliliters per hour, when we were calculating the rate, we knew the infusion time. The infusion time is always in hours and minutes. So for example, four hours and 30 minutes. We want the bag to, or the bag will be done. If it starts, it'll be done in four hours and 30 minutes. That's the infusion time. The completion time is an exact time of the day. So this could be at um, 10.30. This could be at 1.30 or 1.40 or whatever it might be. It's a time of the day. It's not in hours and minutes per se. It's a time of the day when the bag will be complete. So the infusion time is giving us you know, how long will it take for the bag to be complete. The completion time is what time is it going to be when the bag is complete. When we have an order of 800 milliliters that needs to infuse at 50 milliliters per hour, we can figure out how long is it going to take until that bag is empty. And then also, if the start time is at 0830, what time will it be? So let's start with the infusion time. There are multiple ways that you can think about the infusion time and to calculate the infusion time. One way is to kind of go about this in a straightforward, and I don't recommend it, but it might help us kind of think about what's going to happen here. So at 800 milliliters, we know every hour 50 milliliters are going to um, infuse. So that means one hour later, one hour later, we're going to have 50 milliliters that have gone into the patient. So that means we have 750 milliliters left. Then another hour later, another 50, so that's 700. And we're going to complete, continue this until we have zero milliliters left. And what we want to do is to count the number of hours and minutes that it will take. One way that we can do this is to use a proportion. If I know 50 milliliters are going in every one hour, and that's what I know, that's what a rate is telling me, what I want to know is how many hours will it be until 800 milliliters are infused? If 50 milliliters are going in every hour, how many milliliters, or if it, how many hours will it be until 800 milliliters? If we're using a proportion, make sure you have an equal to in between. So to solve this, you can cross multiply. Keep in mind, I still have that equal to sign in there. So I have 50x equal to 1 times 800. So when you divide both sides, you get 16. The answer is 16 hours. This is just using a proportion. If I know 50 milliliters are going in every hour, how many hours will it be until 800 infuse? Another way is to start, always start with the volume if we use dimensional analysis. I want to start with the volume, and what I want to do is to can somehow convert that volume of milliliters into hours and potentially minutes as well. So I know if I wanted to cancel out milliliters, that's going to have to go in the denominator. And if I want to look at the number of milliliters to hour, which I know, I know there are 50 milliliters every hour. So when you multiply those, you get 800 divided by 50 here, you get 16. Again, because we're starting with the volume and we're converting the volume of milliliters into hours. Now this is a nice problem because we don't have a decimal such as 16.3 repeating or 17.1222 or something like that. When you have a decimal, as we'll see in the next problem, it can be a little bit more confusing. You're going to have to convert that to minutes.
but we'll see that at the next problem. These are called the infusion times. So 16 hours, that's the infusion time. The completion time is what exactly, what time is it going to be when the bag is empty? In other words, if we're starting at 0830 and we want to add 16 hours, 16 hours later, what time is it going to be? So 0830 we know is going to be 830 in the morning. If we add 16 hours to that, so 1600, if we add, what are we going to get? So we know this will be oh, no, 30 minutes here. Keep in mind, if this was 40 minutes and this was 70, you don't want to have you know, 8 hours and 70 minutes. That's not a time of the day. So you really got to be careful when you're adding these numbers and you're carrying values over. It's a little bit different. So here, 4, we're going to get 4, right? Because 8 plus 6 is 14. So I get 24.30. Now let's think about that. 8.30 in the morning, 16 hours later, I know once I hit 24 hours, I'm in the next day, right? The military time, we know that there are 24 hours in a day, and the military time is telling us how many hours have passed in that day. So what's happening here is we're actually into the next day. 24.30 is equivalent to 00.30, or 0.30, 0.0.30. And that's because, again, once we add 16 hours, and if you wanted to go through and add you know, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, keep going until you get to this, I suppose you could do that. But it might be helpful to, to also know the addition here. This brings us to the 23.30, but then once we get into that next hour, we're now into the next day, so 00.30. The infusion time was 16. The completion time is 00.30. Let's look at another example that uses drops. In this problem, we're told an IV is set to uh, 45 drops per minute, and we have uh, the tubing where it's converting the milliliters. Every milliliter is made up of 15 drops. The patient is set to receive 300 milliliters, so that's the volume. How long will it take for this to be complete? And we want to give our answer in hours and minutes. Now, what I would recommend doing, and, and one way that you could do this, is to look at the flow rate, the formula, the volume times the drop factor, divided by the time in minutes. All right, maybe we'll just go through it this way. We know the flow rate. At what rate is the patient receiving the medication? That's 45. They're receiving at 45 drops per minute. The volume is 300. They're receiving 300 milliliters. The drop factor is always going to be given to us, that's 15. And what I'm looking for is the time. So we have the pieces of information that we need, we just need to be careful about where we're plugging those values in. So what I have here is 45 is going to be equal to this ratio of 300 times 15 divided by t. Now if you wanted to solve this for t, the most common mistake is for students to multiply 300 times 15 and then divide both sides. You have to be careful because this value of t is in the denominator. So in order to get this out, and what I would recommend doing is to think about this 45 as not just 45, but 45 over 1. And the reason why is now it's pretty obvious that we have a proportion. We have 45 over 1 equal to 300 times 15 over t. Without that over 1, it's hard to see that what we need to do here is to multiply t and 45 and set that equal to 300 times 15. So again, writing this as 45 over 1, it makes this a little bit more clear that we have a proportion here. And in order to solve those, we would multiply 45 times t equal to 300 times 15. Now, if you were to solve this, 45 t times 300 times 15, what you're going to get is t equal to 100. Now, in this formula, that's not going to be 100 hours. We know that in this formula, the time is going to be minutes. So what we have is 100 minutes. We want to give our answer in hours and minutes. Well, I know every 60 minutes is going to be one hour. 
So if I take away 60 minutes, I'm left with 40 minutes. And when I took away that 60 minutes, that was one hour. So my infusion time is going to be one hour and 40 minutes. So this is if we are using the formula. Just be careful when you're solving for t. Now what I would recommend, because again, this is going to be similar to every problem that you can, that you can be provided, is it can be done with dimensional analysis. And the conversion that we want to do is we want to somehow convert our volume into a unit of time. So I start with my volume, and what I want when I am done is a measure of hours, or in this case, potentially minutes, if you want minutes. So what I'm going to do is to convert this to hours. And why I'm going to convert this to hours is because I want to, I want to be clear of, of something when we get to the end. So 300 milliliters. I want to first convert that milliliters into the amount of drops. So how many total drops is the patient receiving? Well, I know one milliliter is 15 drops. Now, if I continue, I, and I know if I multiply these, I'm going to have the total number of drops. However, I don't want drops. I know that there's 45 drops going into the patient every minute. So I can convert drops into minutes. How many total minutes will it take if there are 45 drops per minute? Now, I'm going to convert this into hours. So we're just going step by step here, converting the milliliters into drops, the drops into minutes, and finally there are 60 minutes in one hour. Let's multiply these out. So up top, what you're going to get is 45 100, 300 times 15, 4,500. Down below, what you're going to get is 2,700. So when you put that into your calculator, 4,500 divided by 2,700, what you're going to get is 1.6 repeating. 1.6 repeating. And this unit is going to be in hours. Now, this is 1.6 repeating hours. One hour, but this 0.6 repeating is not 6 minutes. It's not 66 minutes. This is 0.666 repeating of an hour. And what we need to do is to convert that into minutes. So I can eliminate, I can take away this one. We know we have at least one hour. But now I want to take this decimal, whatever the decimal is, and if you're putting this in your calculator, you want to put 0.666 and fill up your calculator screen with sixes. And then you want to multiply that by 60, right? Because this is 0.6 repeating, and I'm going to just write the, maybe I shouldn't have written that bar. We want to take that and we want to convert that into minutes. And we know one hour is 60 minutes. So if you multiply that decimal of 0.6 repeating times 60, you're going to get 40. You need to keep that decimal exactly as it is. So we had one hour, and this decimal, this part of one hour, if we multiply that by 60, we get 40 minutes. So we still get the one hour in 40 minutes. Now either way is appropriate. If you want to start with the volume and use dimensional analysis to convert into time, you're welcome to do that. Just remember that decimal needs to be converted into minutes. Or if you want to use a formula, you're welcome to do that as well. Many students are more comfortable just finding the total number of minutes and then turning that into hours and minutes as opposed to finding hours and then going back and finding minutes. So there are multiple ways that these, these problems can be solved. If you have questions about that, please let me know.